Hi folks, meteorologist Ryan Hoke here with today's edition of the Hokey Video Blog. Hope your Sunday morning is starting out on the right note. A lot to talk about. We've got rain, then snow, then maybe even a slick spot slash freezing road threat as we go through the next 24 hours. Let's get right through it. Here's a quick today's Hokey weather fact. And we're talking about the coldest all-time temperature on Earth, 128.6 degrees below zero. That was at a Soviet observation outpost in Antarctica back in 1983. No temperatures like that in our forecast anytime soon, nor probably ever. On our SkyTrack network of cameras this morning, a lot of man-made snow out there. Paoli, Indiana, Paoli Peaks, beautiful sunrise, but those peaks of sunshine will be short-lived. The temperatures are on their way up, though. 34 in E-Town, where you guys still have a bit of a snowpack on the grassy areas, so it may take just a little more time for you guys to recover this afternoon. The rest of us in the uh, mid to upper 30s across the area. Now, here's how the Doppler radar looks, as you'll see across portions of our northern and southern Indiana counties. Well, just a few showers, kind of the front runners. Uh, of this system moving in as the warm air tries to move in from the southwest. So a little bit of what's called isentropic uplift here. The warm air wants to glide upward, create some lift, create a few showers, and that's what you get uh, when you get one of these systems moving in. Otherwise, temperatures, they've been largely rising this morning. We saw 41. We dipped down a little bit as we got into the maximum cooling of this morning. But overnight, we did see temperatures rising, as you'll see that they did uh, there in Lexington from 34 to 35. Here's the next system. It's a big clipper moving on through the Midwest, and eventually that low pressure moves right over us here in Metro Louisville. We'll be on the warm side, giving us pretty steady rain as we go throughout this afternoon and this evening before the cool air crashes in on the back side, creating a few snow showers. This is the side of the system here we're watching, but not a whole lot of snow as they will see probably north of I-70 here toward uh, the northern suburbs of Indianapolis and northward. Here's how it works out on Futurecast, 42 by 11 a.m. Then we really warm up by 12.30, 51 here with the city. I think we top out near 52. This model, the RPM, tries to get, uh, get us up to 53, but I think the rain will be moving in so much so that it'll keep temperatures down because that rain-cooled air will knock us back down into the upper 40s for most of us as we go throughout this afternoon. But the rain moves into the metro as we go throughout 3, 4 o'clock. Again, back into the 40s for us. Notice how Seymour is down to 40 by 6.30. Still good on the roads. They're just slippery by that point with some rain falling. Not a big deal. Maybe a rumble of thunder in our southern counties, as you saw that heavier return near Madisonville. But then, as we go midnight and thereafter, the snow begins to filter in from northwest to southeast. Notice how the rain snow line by 2.30, just north of the city. Temperatures, though, will play a crucial role in what we see from Monday morning, because notice how we're already in the upper 20s up here across the northern sections of our viewing area by 2.30. As we go through time, that gets even worse. In fact, we're in the mid-20s by 8 a.m. in Salem, Seymour, Bedford, Jasper, Cordon, really just anywhere outside of the city. We've got the potential for mid-20s. I've got us cruising on down to 27 degrees as we go throughout Monday morning. This could create a flash freeze threat because we'll have the rainfall that has already moved through, additional snow showers, those wet roads. It may get cold enough, fast enough, that it wants to freeze into a sheet of ice. This has happened before. Good example. Back in 2010, we had this. You may remember it. But as we go throughout the rest of your Monday, the snow showers, they filter on out toward the east. Most of the day is relatively precipitation-free, but we see a few more snow or rain showers move in Monday night into very early Tuesday. I think this will be mainly a northern Kentucky event, but the latest... Uh, Canadian models trying to point this more at us. The trajectories of these clipper type systems uh, near the lakes are kind of difficult to ascertain more than really 24 hours in advance, so that's something we'll be watching throughout the next few days. Snow accumulations at this point looks like less than an inch from I-64 northward, and if you live in Lawrence, Jackson, or Jennings counties, you guys have the potential to see just under an inch at this point, really more toward the half-inch scenario for us here in the metro Louisville area and along I-64. It gets light enough, I think, south of Bardstown toward the parkways and on down toward Columbia that it's more so a dusting. Here's the timeline, though. Rain before midnight. After 12 a.m., from northwest to southeast, we see the snow showers filter in. Here in the metro, that's around 3 a.m., 4 a.m. maybe, when that starts. And we could have some slick roads by the Monday morning commute. It could be, at the very minimum, some slick spots, because we'll have a few of those wet areas that will have frozen up. But if this cold air moves in fast enough, it may freeze the roads 
uh, just kind of in a solid sheet of ice, that flash freeze scenario. Let's hope that doesn't happen. Let's hope we get some winds in here. It takes a little longer to crash on down to those temperatures. Make for a better Monday morning commute. You'll want to tune in for Christy, though, and Sunrise for the latest for that. Of course, I'll have the latest at 6 and 11 tonight. Here's how we go through time on FutureCast. We get a little bit of a warm-up as we go throughout your Wednesday and your Thursday. Then we get some cooler air in here by Saturday, maybe a slight chance of a flurry or two. But really, I think the big situation is going to be as we go throughout the latter portion of the weekend, February 1st, you'll be watching the Super Bowl with us and probably all bundled up because we've got a really big shot of cold air coming in. This is how the Euro paints it. The GFS is trying to uh, trying to delay the time maybe by a day or so. It's been having trouble with that, trying to see how this pattern's going to shape up. It's also been having trouble determining if the AO and the NAO, two atmospheric indices we use to determine determine if we're going to have a trough over the east. It's been having trouble determining if it's going to be going negative twice in kind of a pitter-patter fashion or if it's going to be solidly negative during this time. The euro is more aggressive with that and I think that's going to be how things pan out based on previous events. Now, precipitation wise, this is where things get a little tricky. There comes that second clipper as we go throughout Thursday into Friday. You saw it flash past your screen. And then as we go into Sunday, it's not painting a whole lot of precipitation, but you probably saw a little bit of snow shower activity up here across portions of the Great Lakes down into uh, even Ohio. Now that's a little bit of a clipper system that the Euro tries to create as this cold air is filtering in. In fact, the cold air is so strong, it blocks the southern stream from trying to link up with that system and creating some sort of southern stream storm that would give us a snowfall. Now, we have to say here that the GFS did yesterday put in a southern stream system for us. Here's a blank map to help explain this. And the southern stream system, you know, gave us an appreciable snowfall. We don't, of course, look at raw model data like that and just, at, you know, give it out as the forecast. So we looked at the euro. The euro said differently. And I think I trust the euro more in this situation because it does look like the cold air is going to be very strong. And that's going to be hard for any low pressure system to kind of punch through that and make for a uh, low that would be a southern stream event to give us a bigger snow. The Canadian, though, has been a little more aggressive with that, though. A little less aggressive with the cold air, a little more aggressive with the low pressure. The 12Z yesterday tracked the low pressure like that. That would give folks uh, in southern Indiana, maybe northern Kentucky, the chance for a snow. The 0Z earlier this morning tracked it to our north and west. More of a snowfall event for Illinois. We'll have to see if that works out. The Canadians have been one to pay attention to this winter because it has led the charge on some of the uh, systems that have been harder to forecast. So we've got uh, over a week for this to transpire. So Let's give it some time, and we will give you the latest on our thoughts throughout the week. Here's our seven-day breakdown real quick for you. As we move throughout your Wednesday, that's when I think things really begin to improve by temperature and by sunshine. But, of course, that's after the mess that we have as we go throughout your Sunday into your Monday. Here's kind of a breakdown of the precip chances. I think the rain will be the most widespread by 6 o'clock. Snow showers begin filtering in after midnight. Slick road threats as we go throughout your Monday morning. Something certainly to watch across the area. Temperatures on Monday aren't going to be improving much. Probably only up to 36 degrees for a high temperature. The snow showers, they filter out by Monday, I'd say, a mid to late morning, but we could have additional snow showers on Tuesday morning. Maybe some rain showers mixed in, depending on how the temperature profiles line up with that. The next clipper, Thursday into Friday, rain, maybe to a few snow showers. That one looks to be less impactful, though, than what we've got coming our way tonight. Then by Saturday, notice how temperatures drop into the upper 30s. Got a little chance for a flurry in there because we may see another one of these little clipper systems moving through. It's a little harder to see those at this distance out in time. Plenty of coming events here in Kentuckiana. The weather's always wild this time of year, and of course this is no exception here. We told you that winter would probably be making a pretty staunch return as we go throughout the latter portion of January, early February. That looks to be the case still, and we've already seen some snowfall, and certainly I think there could be more on the radar as we go throughout the next couple of weeks with the pattern that we're getting into, the cold air shots coming from Canada. They may come from clippers, though. These southern stream systems, uh, they're not as surefire this distance out, but if we get one, one, you probably won't know that we're going to be getting it until just a couple of days out. You really don't like to see big snows at weeks out in advance because usually things change to the point where you don't see those, whereas the systems that kind of surprise you a couple days beforehand in the models and then you start tracking them, those are the ones that give us uh, more so the bigger snows. As certainly we saw uh, last week a little bit. For now, meteorologist Ryan Hoke, I'll see you back here for Wave 3 News at 6 and 11. Stay safe out there.